Welcome to what is now going to become the final episode of Carl is Famous. Finally, it's been many, many weeks, but I've actually completed something for a change, including all of its DLC, which is weird to say on this channel. But, um, one, one slight thing. I've had to use a guide. I'm sorry, <laughs> but once you actually know how these are actually done, you're going to understand why, for these last four, I just didn't have a fucking clue. First thing says, let's start. This one, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but we'll see by the end. Basically, time to go over to, I believe, uh, I think we got to go, not embrace the Christmas spirit, we need to exit the bed. Go over to the desk, uh, I believe we got to check the drawer and then pick up the flashlight. And then the spare change, because we need to go and get some batteries from the old techie shop. Thank you very much. And then we put the thing in the batteries and do like that. I think it was the same as before when we looked down in the, um, in the cupboard. I, I think something like that. So we go back to the room, out into the hallway. La di da di da. We're going to leave the apartment, uh, and then we're going to go tech store and buy ourselves some batteries. But uh, also, we got a steel techno gym. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is getting a little bit convoluted at this point. So we got a nick techno gym. So now we got techno gym, and now we got to go all the way back to the apartment, go back into the bedroom, open the cupboard. Inspect the flashlight, and oh, we go into the cupboard where, guess what, we find a small metal box. And you can use Techno Gym to upgrade it. How do I, how, how would I know that? How, I, I, I tried many different things. That one wasn't possible for me to know. <laughs> so, Kyle pulled out the electronics from Techno Gym's eyes and fingers and started shoving them into the box. The box began to rattle, imbued with the power of important technology found from Techno Gym. Suddenly, with a pop and a fizz, Kyle found himself taken back to 19th century Europe. Oh, wonderful. Kyle was riding inside of a horse-drawn carriage. He was surrounded by poofy dresses and shocked faces. Every face was stone cold, made of copper, and definitely a robot. Kyle had found himself in Robo-Europe. <laughs> the gathered Robo-Densians' heads started spinning and shooting out alarm lasers from their mouths and ears. Kyle reacted quickly. Um, I guess it doesn't matter what I pick. Should we consume them, giving up by dying? Uh, firing lasers from his mouth, yes! Carl's neck started to spin at an alarming rate. Lasers started firing out from every orifice. Although the Robodensians were made of such tasks, Carl was simply too much better. Soon they all had been incapacitated. Carl was suddenly in inexplicably exhausted. He lay down on one of the robots' lap and fell asleep. Sleep away, Kyle. <laughs> While Carl was asleep, the robot citizens plugged in his body into a generator linked up to their main power grid. Having energy sucked from his body, Carl kept in a pseudo cryogenic state, keeping him unconscious and preserved. Robo scientists began to use Carl's energy production as a center of study, launching the robot world into a golden age. Carl started to power all of the technological advancements of the robot world. Wars began to center around control of Kyle. Carl was deemed as the most important discovery in the modern robo world. After humans took over the ancient robot civilizations, Carl was mummified by the ancient Egyptians. Carl was stolen from a museum in the early 1800s. <laughs> he was intended to be smuggled across the Atlantic, but sank. Scientists uncovered him encased in ice in the Antarctic and shipped him by helicopter for study. On the way, Carl was accidentally shoved out of the helicopter. <laughs> he crash landed through the roof onto the bed of his apartment. After several days of lying unconscious in bed, Carl began to stir. Oh, Carl ended up in bed. Yay! <laughs> Did that actually count as an ending? Time travel one. Woo! Finally, see. You can kind of understand quite why I've had to use a guide at this point. Because, god damn, I'm not thinking of this myself. Now we've got to do one more. This time we're going to put some clothes on, which is probably what we should have done last time. That's probably why they were all um, screaming back in the old ancient robo days. So we can exit the bed, chuck a couple of cutie clothes on. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Jeans and swimming goggles because we want to look flash. And then we've got to go and grab our... Uh, what was it we're going to grab? We're going to grab the same thing again. The flashlight and also a little bit of money. To be fair, this one I probably could have uh, got myself. Like, uh, it isn't too difficult this one in itself. But I, I never thought of it. But basically, we've got to go back to the apartment. And instead of using it, like we have been every single time, like I seem to end up mucking around with, I need to pick it up. I, n I always forget to pick it up and try that way around. <laughs> oh, no, go back to the apartment. Go back to the apartment. Uh, uh Bedroom. Uh, closet. Uh, expect a flashlight. Fuck, please don't. Fuck, no! I'm going to have to do it all again. Shit! Okay, smart, smart time. Inspected with the flashlight. This time, after several minutes of searching, we found a mailbox again. But we're going to take it for later. A moment after seeing the studio lights brightened and everything happened again as it has done about 17 times. But this time, we're going back in time. Good evening, everyone. Sir Carl. Tonight, Rachel and I will time travel together. In one motion, Carl grabbed Rachel's arm and pressed the red button on the time machine with his elbow. Carl and Rachel were sent back into a time before human existence on Earth. 
Yeah, I'm, 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 worse than Robo City or better than Robo City? Probably more to look at. Yeah, they were standing next to a large lake. There was a forest behind them full of singing birds. Lizards were everywhere. That doesn't sound too fun. <laughs> Carl, dear, said Rachel, stern but not angry. You can't just do things like that. Rachel began digging in the dirt, looking for a small smooth stones. I'm sorry, Rachel, said Carl. I got a bit ahead of myself. Carl began helping to look for stones. Well, it's okay, Carl. I forgive you. Rachel took Carl's stones and started to build a small stack on the ground. Carl silently began sifting through the sand near the lake to find pure mud. Well, since we're here together, said Rachel, using nearby sticks to build a pyramid around the rocks. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm fine, said Carl, sticking pieces of shale together with the mud. I've been preparing for your interview all day. Rachel began to bundle the nearby foliage into small power cells. Do you love being famous, she asked. Carl used bones from the dead fish ashore to start crafting some energy capacitors. <laughs> That's an interesting question, Rachel, he answered. There's ups and downs. How about yourself? I think I'd love to be unknown with a loving family, said Rachel. Being so recognisable gets very lonely. Rachel started grabbing live birds as they flew by to make a nuclear reactor. Okay. I understand that incredibly well, said Carl, extracting pure hydrogen from the lake using a reed siphon. <laughs> There was a warm, understanding silence between them. After a few minutes, Carl broke the silence. Can you pass me the arc world and when you're done, I need to weld these bioreactive plates together. Soon the pair constructed a janky but workable return time machine. As they climbed in, Rachel and Carl looked at each other. Both knew they had bonded. With a flick of a switch and whirl of the engine made out of beaver pelt and some pops, the duo returned home. Later that evening, back in his apartment, Carl thought about the time he'd spent with Rachel. He was glad they had gotten the chance to take the trip together. Yay! We took a trip, a wonderful trip in time and space, and it was wonderful, as I just said. So, two more. Surprise with this one as well, because this is more dying. I didn't realise I was going to have to die. So, we're going to be dead. Carl is now a ghost, but this time we actually have to put clothes on. Clothesy ghost. We're not allowed to be naked ghost, because that's bad. Probably, I think, because we've got to go to the interview. I think. Anyway, we're going to scavenge, and we are going to look for some bugs. But this time, we are going to shave them. Shave them, save them, instead of eating them all. And, ha 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 into the hallway, right now, into the locked door. That we're going to go, woo, through as a ghost. This time, use the sewing machine. And we're going to make, um, bug puppets. <laughs> so finally, the sewing machine has some use. <laughs> Carl started sewing dead bugs together to make a small, actuated finger puppets. Carl crafted a bug bucket, pucket, pucket, puppet for each finger. He named them after guests he had interviewed on his show. Yeah. <laughs> Carl found himself in the room. Time to go back to the hallway and then, uh, I guess, I guess just wait until the interview. It is time to produce bug puppets. Carl slipped his bug puppets onto his fingers. Hello, everybody, he said, wiggling the puppet he had named himself after. I'm Kyle. And I'm Rachel, <laughs> Carl screamed, wiggling a different finger. You're so much better than me. I know Rachel, Carl wiggled. He looks better meaningfully at the human Rachel. Ah, uh, 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 said one of Carl's other puppets. I'm super fat and Carl interviewed me last week. And I'm super irritating, said another finger, and not very attractive. Rachel stared at Carl, incredibly disorientated. Kyle, she asked, what are those puppets made out of? Carl thrust both hands at Rachel's face. Puppets pointed at her eyes. We are puppets, Rachel, he said, scrunching his fingers up and down. We're real people. <laughs> Rachel plucked the puppet that Carl said he was her offensive finger. Carl, she explained, exclaimed, this is several dead bugs patched together. Accept us, Rachel, said Carl, scrunching. We need acceptance. Rachel excited, ex exited a chair and walked out of frame. In a moment, she returned with the bag. She plucked each puppet off Carl's hands and tossed them into the bag. Carl, leave the bugs alone next time, she said. Rachel left the frame again, bringing the bag of puppets along with her. Carl suddenly by himself was unsure what to do. After a few minutes of hemming and hawing, humming, no, it's umming and hawing, not hemming and hawing, Carl resorted to telling jokes for the remainder of the broadcast. Fans did not notice much difference between this and his previous episodes. Yay! He prepared an average episode. <laughs> okay. So, final, final, final one. And, uh, oh boy. If you figured this out without a guide, a round of applause to you, because. Oh boy, okay, time to wither away. We fell asleep. Oh no, we're now ghost boys. And we gotta sit at the desk and go grab, um... I think this is almost the culmination of grabbing absolutely everything. So first of all, we're gonna get the flashlight. We're gonna get some change. And then we're gonna go, of course, go buy some batteries. Easy peasy, start to the day. Nice, nice, nice. Now back to the room. I think we just sort of go back in time and forward as ghosts and do weird stuff. 
I don't really know. But first of all, before we go out, actually, we do need to sit at the desk and we do need to write some notes for the interview. And this time, we do uh, we do the Are You Guilty one? Because that's uh, that starts off something completely different. I feel like we're just going to save the world or something at this point. We're going to go by batteries out in the hallway and then I assume go and sort out the time machine thing. All right, so leave the apartment, go to the tech store. Ooh, batteries. Insert them into the flashlight, please. Thank you very much. Go straight back. Uh, we're not going to steal Techno Gym, I don't think. I believe we aren't. So we'll return to the street, return to the apartment, go straight into the bedroom, and please hope to God that it lets me get in here, and it's not, is it? No! Oh, I've done something wrong! Oh boy, so that's why I didn't quite get through it, because I've got zero hours. So now we're going to travel back in time! Do -do -do -do. So, first things first, we need to go into the hallway, and we need to go, and oh fuck, I didn't go that way. Oh, that was bad. That was dumb. I need to go back into the um, bedroom because I've got to wear clothes. <laughs> I forgot about the clothes thing. We're going to wear a nice, sweet, ghostly suit. Sounds good to me. And then we're going to go into the kitchen and we're going to make some food. Because I believe that we are actually going to go into a sweet little old interview once again. Okay, out of the kitchen and then we go straight to the hallway into the locked door. And we pick up... Um, what can you think we're going to pick up here? Yes, laser claymore. <laughs> <laughs> Straight back into the hallway, lovely jubbly, and then we go downstairs, visit the neighbour, and guess what, Gabby? Ah, oh, yum, 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 yum. It's time to eat you. And then that's it. I believe that we just go and do the interview as normal. We have, of course, been through all of these questions before. Nothing is too different. We're already back to normal, so there's no like, oh, weird, are you a ghost thing? So we're gonna go, are you guilty? Oh, it's twitched slightly as it always does. All oh, your crimes that she didn't know. I'm gonna call the police. Carl pulled out his phone and dialed the police once again for like the third time, I think. We're going to chip her up. Carl stuck out his leg. Rachel stumbled and crashed to the floor. But in a moment, she was on her feet. She drew a blunt weapon seemingly out of thin air and started to swing at Kyle. Carl produced his laser claimer and blocked off her first defenses. A grand fight between the two side. Blow was trading for blow. Spins, flips. Rachel threw a large swing towards Carl's head. He blocked it forcefully, sending himself forwards. Carl and Rachel found themselves inches away from each other, face to face, weapons crossed. How can you cross a laser claymore? Oh, it's like the sword, it's not a... Oh. Oh, I thought it was like a... Claymore, not a... Like, not like, a, you know, like a halo thing. <laughs> laser sword, it's a laser sword. As they looked at each other, something magical happened. Carl thought about all the times Rachel had smiled at him. Carl thought about her witty, polite answers. Rachel began to think about how intelligently Carl had prepared just to talk to her. She thought about how he lived, not magnificently, but in a small cluttered apartment. Carl and Rachel had slowly, indecisively been falling in love. <gasps> Carl and Rachel's lock was broken. They continued to fight back and forth, but their eyes never parted. Rachel spun around, leg out. She kicked up Carl's climber out of his hand. She grabbed Carl by the front of the shirt and tugged him close. Perhaps, she whispered to him, the last thing I should steal is your heart. Rachel pecked Carl on the lips and slid out of the door, disappearing. In the following days, Rachel was not found. Many sums of money from artifacts that had been stolen from museums and banks were returned overnight. Small amounts of sums were missing. Equal amounts were donated anonymously to homeless charities. Carl spit Gabby back out after his fight with Rachel. She continued to be a vigilante and stopped many crimes. After receiving a note one night under his door, Carl took a sudden vacation to a city in Europe. Although he had stated to his fans it would be a short trip, he never returned. Slowly, Carl fell out of the common mind. News outlets began to cover other topics. Reruns stopped airing. Carl faded into obscurity. But it is rumoured that a couple from the US started a family in the coast of the British Isles. Yay! And they seem quite happy to not be famous anymore. Kyle was finally famous. <laughs> and that's all the endings done. Oh, man. Jeez. Like, honestly, for the most of them, maybe the one with the bug puppets I could have gotten... Because it's not too difficult because, you know, I didn't really use the sign machine for anything, I don't think. But my god, those other ones. There was there was no way that you would think that you got to consume Gabby and use laser claymores and... Oh. <laughs> but finally, we're going to have one last nice little look at this. Ooh, and even all the Christmassy ones. Ooh, we've done so many. Well, if there's any more DLCs to this, maybe I'll play some more. But for now, we are completely done with Carl's Famous. I hope you did enjoy the series. It was very fun to me. If you did, please do let me know and I shall see you next time.